I have recently published two videos about special moves that can be added to drone footage while editing. One was about the vertigo effect, and the next one was about all sorts of top down moves, more specifically, adding zoom and rotation to get the famous corkscrew effect. In this video, I will show how to add zoom and panning to existing footage to create several other effects. The ideal situation is shooting the footage in 5.4K, therefore limited to owner of the R2S, as it allows to encode in 4K without loss of resolution. But with any other DJI model of the Mavic line, it is possible to do the same when encoding in 1080p. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with friends on social. So, fasten the seatbelts and let's get going. Let's start with this clip where the aircraft is simply panning horizontally. Let's make things more interesting by adding some extra movement to pretend that the drone is flying forward and sideways while keeping the camera locked on a target. In other words, we will try to replicate a movement known as course lock, where the drone flies diagonally and the camera is disconnected from the flying path. We could perform this move directly with the drone using Intelligent Flight Mode Spotlight, but there are several reasons why it is useful to be able to add this move in post-production. First of all, with R2S it is not possible to use Intelligent Flight Modes when shooting at 5.4K. Also, in many cases we don't have the time or enough batteries to perform every single interesting move on the field. Other times, revisiting old footage shot months or years earlier, we might find that we can create a new interesting clip by adding a moving post. It is a huge benefit to improve our footage sitting in front of the computer with an ice cold drink. For this tutorial I'm using keyframes in Premiere Pro, but all video editors have keyframes and they work in a very similar way so you can use any editor you like. We'll choose this whole Sicilian house and we'll keep it more or less in the center of the frame. We will start from far away and progressively zoom in while maintaining the house in the middle of the frame. So we go to the first frame to set the starting scene of our clip. Since the footage was shot in 5.4K and I'm using a 4K timeline, the image is bigger than what we see on the screen. We could zoom out to 70% if we want, but I prefer to keep some extra room for the move we are going to accomplish, and I set the scale to 90%. We set a keyframe for position and one for scale by clicking on the stopwatches, so that this value is stored and will not be affected by modifying the values in other point of the timeline. With the playhead still in the first keyframe, we modify the position values to put the house more or less in the middle of the frame. If your video editor has a grid, it is useful to use a couple of grid lines to check the position of the house. Now let's go to the last frame of the clip, set a value of 200% for scale and reposition the house in the middle of the frame. As you can see, the house moves first to the right of the frame and then back to the middle towards the end. The move we had in post is lagging compared to the lateral movement of the drone. We can improve things by adding a few more keyframes, each time repositioning the house towards the center. And now the move is smooth with a nice parallax effect with the background. If you should experience a slightly abrupt transition at each new keyframe, it is possible to get an even smoother motion by adding ease in and ease out effects to each keyframe, as I will show in the next example. In this clip the drone is orbiting in a constant way around this monastery on the foothill of Mount Etna, 
sloping towards the sea. There is some interesting parallax with the villages, the little hills and the sea at different levels in the background. But the moment is a bit boring, simply circling. We could add some movement as if the drone, while circling, gets closer to the target and lower in altitude, panning slightly to the left, then goes up again in altitude, and finally slowly moves away from the target. This scene was shot with an R2S in circle mode at 4K. Since I'm encoding in 4K, there will be a loss of resolution that you might notice if you have a big screen. But for user encoding in 1080p, maybe shooting with a different model of drone, there will be no loss of resolution at all. I would like the clip to start rotating for a few seconds, as it is, and then add the extra movement. So instead of adding our first keyframe at the very beginning, we move to the point in the timeline where we want the movement to start, after about 3 seconds. Now we set our keyframes for position and scale. So this value will be the one specified here from the beginning of the clip up to this point. We now move a couple of seconds further on our timeline and enter a scale value of 200%. And we move the position down and to the left framing our target to the top right of the image. Notice that as soon as we move our image, a keyframe for position is automatically created. We have the impression of the drone advancing toward the targets while descending. In my opinion, the forward movement is a bit too fast, so we can move the second set of keyframes a bit to the right, so that they are a bit further away from the first set. The move now is a bit slower and feel more natural. Now we want to give the impression of the drone raising in altitude while moving slightly to the right. So we bring the playhead to a few seconds later in the timeline and reframe our target towards the bottom of the screen and slightly to the left. Now it looks like the aircraft is raising in altitude while moving slightly to the right. Finally we want the drone to move back to the original position and resume the simple orbiting around the target. So we move further in the timeline, set the scale value to 100% and reframe the target towards the middle of the frame. Notice that between the last two keyframes, for a short while there is an empty area at the top of the image. This is because in the previous keyframe we were at the top of our image without any pixels left above and in the next one we are zooming out a bit too fast. So to fix the issue, we have to move the keyframe further away from each other. We also notice that at every set of keyframe, the change of motion is a bit abrupt. We can make it a bit smoother by using is in and is out. First we select all the keyframes by drawing a rectangle around them. Then we right click and in the submenu Temporal Interpolation we choose Is In and then Is Out. Now everything flows much better. The clip has now a much more articulated movement and the parallax effect is more engaging. Click on these links to watch my other videos about adding special effects in post. One about the vertigo effect, the other one about top-down views. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.